My name is Elise Benjamin, and um, I'll read a poem today, Tu Shen's Lament. The epigraph reads, Tu Shen was a Chinese monk, circa 1550 BC. Belgium is on lockdown. Italy is stunned by death. Opera singers perform out their windows to the whole neighborhood. Everyone has a box seat, free of charge. People smile and cry from their balconies. The notes of an aria fall like tears on empty streets. In our town, a policeman tested positive in the county courthouse, just down the street. We stay home, work in the garden, and sing a song from Serbia while we wash our hands. Aideyano, kolo da igramo. It came from China. And then from everywhere, the white gowns and rolling beds, the sorrow and blame. Yet 2,000 years ago, Tu Shen saw the universe as a jeweled net, a gem at every intersection reflecting all the others. In my dream last night, I saw a row of homeless people bound to tight, brightly colored squares. Along a bridge, their limbs splayed wide in the pose of Da Vinci's man. Today at my writing desk, the redwood trees out my window flutter slim green needles. Branches open, always open to wave at any passing breeze. This Time by Claire Lauder. All you have to do is read, hear, dry, crackling, grasses now before they burst into golden merciless flame then gather your box of important papers pets devices and head for open space before trees buildings crash down and around you, thinking this is a movie, really a drama, a dream, but it's life now, your life on this flooded, burning planet. So many crowded together, flaming, floating loose inside, from anger, greed, and pride, and this time we will not escape suddenly. This time we must hear each other or die. My name's Kirsten Jones Neff, and this poem, written in honor of George Floyd, is entitled Witness. How do we cut yellow roses when someone cannot breathe? How do we push our noses in to smell the scent of heaven flowing from each petal when someone cannot breathe? How do we allow ourselves to feel the delicate color of peace as it wraps around our hearts and someone cannot breathe? How can we cut blossoms from our gardens one by one, resting in the delight in the essence of alive when someone cannot breathe? How then will we gather these flowers and remember that they are but an offering from God who has only let us borrow this brief moment, 
this blink of life? And how will we praise God's majesty and thank her for her grace when our only job is to bear witness? And someone can no longer breathe. Hi, I'm Dave Setter, and the title of my poem is Conversation with a Trail Map, Sleeping Bear Dunes National Monument. I'm told someone dreamed these dunes into the shape of a sleeping bear. If you call them dormant, beware. They awaken beneath your feet when you tread on bear beach sand, where fires are permitted between waterline and the first dune. But first, even before potato salad, someone had to bring fire to the people. Some say it was the robin, her breast burned red, carrying the gift. What else do we have in common, you and I and the bear yet to den? If we have one fear in common, the Department of Homeland Security advises deer rifle seasons November. Don't wear white certain seasons when the forest sings with bullets. We must find convenient boulders to dive behind. And yet, you say this boulder's a glacial erratic. It must have come from a distant place. So much talk on the news these days makes me want to ask. When bears cross the Canadian border, are they stopped at gunpoint. Will we avoid the subject altogether and study the beech maple forest where Dutchman's breeches bloom in spring before leaves appear on trees? I love sprung rhythm on fertile ground in trees, even trees turned into trail maps. No wonder this cherry capital is suited to growing trees sprung from discarded fruit. If only our nation's capital could produce sweeter fruit. Far away from there, though a stranger here, I'm hungry to learn the local lost customs. We've strayed so far from mythology of bear, but it's a comfort to know the name Sleeping Bear Dunes was authorized by Congress. Authorized, unauthorized, we continue to settle this lakeshore named long ago when the bear was dreamed into shape, when our ancestors, global erratics, dug their feet in the sand. Margaret Stowawi with my poem, Refuge, a COVID-19 Lament, for John Squires. Devotee of Lake Michigan, you took your final ride to the shore beneath a blackberry-stained sky, 4.40 a.m., April 4th. When they told her you died, your wife sang, You are my sunshine. You an architect solving for cracks, crumbling foundations, a mountain of rubble you could no longer scale. Thank you for explaining what cigarettes once meant for you, even as they etched your lungs, how in your past life, alcohol made words bite like wild dogs you invited home to feast on your family, until your stroke, the end, the beginning. Hard to believe on those mornings with mists rising off the lake when you silently poured coffee, handing round the mugs to us, the words snoozing like your snoring poodle, time slowly gaining speed as caffeine nudged us awake. Hard to believe only Tuesday you savored each bite of pasta your dear one prepared. Afterward, lying with her, knowing you resuscitated, rebuilt your refuge together, safe with her. 
Friday on a conference call from the hospital telling her, your children, how much, how much. Now, far from your lake at the edge of the ocean, we howl, yip at the bruised sky of 8 p.m., keening your name. We want to punch death for inept direction, wasted days, misinformation from denying lips. Virus drift down, their will to live in us, take us as they lived in you, took you beyond our crumbling refuge.